but that's okay. I'm, I'm grateful to be here. Uh, we'll begin the talk today with a little uh, meditation. So I'll have you gently close your eyes. And just bring your awareness to your breath. Don't change it. But simply observe the breath as it enters and leaves the body. Become aware of the support of the chair beneath your body and of your feet resting on the floor. Become aware of the space that your body occupies. The space in front of you, behind you, above and below, and all around you. And gently bring your awareness to your heart center where you'll see a beautiful 12 petaled lotus flower. In the center of the flower sits a beautiful antelope. Just go ahead and look into its big, soft, gentle, dark eyes and make a connection. And then watch as the antelope begins to skip ever so gracefully from petal to petal. Each of the petals represents life. You may notice that the antelope has a tendency to remain on the same few petals, to linger there longer than the rest. I just allow it to experience each and every one of the 12 petals all that life has to offer. The pain, the pleasure, the sorrow, the joy, the darkness and the light. Then watch as the antelope returns once again to the center of the flower, 
where it lays down to rest. And once again, go ahead and look into its big, soft, gentle, dark eyes and make a connection. watch as the antelope begins to fade from view. And the flower fades from view. And allowing your whole physical body to simply drop away. and what remains. And you may ask yourself, who's having this experience? Well, the observer, the observed, and the process of observing are one. Who am I? And take a nice deep gentle breath. And as you exhale, gently open your eyes. So how did a boy from Glasgow end up here? How do you end up doing what you do? This question was asked, or these questions were asked to me from a Hollywood superstar. The, here he was speaking about was a private island in the Caribbean called Parrot Key in the Turks and Caicos Islands in the British West Indies. He said, I've spent a lot of time in Glasgow filming. And Glasgow is one of the craziest places I've ever been to. The things I've seen in Glasgow, I've never seen anywhere else. He said, how did a boy from Glasgow end up here? Now the interesting thing was the day before I received an email from a long time client from right here in Calgary and the email read, Steve, I know you're working with a lot of the most recognizable names in Hollywood and I think you'll find this article interesting. And the title of the article was True Story. And it was written by a guy by the name of Paul Harvey. No relation. But I was intrigued. And so I read the article and it tells the story of a young, uh, a hardworking man, family man, who had moved his family from New York State to Australia for a work opportunity. And part of the, the man's family was a handsome young boy who had aspirations of becoming a movie star. He was biding his time. He had a, a job working in the shipyards until a, an opportunity arose within the movie industry. And one night as he was walking home from work, he was attacked by five thugs who were trying to rob him of his money. And he didn't want to um, hand over his money, so he decided to fight back. And he ended up receiving a terrible beating. So much so that he, he was left for dead. And the police found him. And they were 
they thought he was dead and were taking his body to the morgue. And en route to the, to the morgue, the vehicle, the ambulance, paddy wagon, whatever it was, went over a bump and he let out a gasp of air. And the policeman in the back realized he was alive, banged on the window, and said, get to the emergency. So they drove to the emergency and they managed to save his life, but he was left really disfigured. There goes his dream of being a movie star. And so one day he was in church. He was kneeling in a pew, sobbing, and the priest came along and said, what's wrong, son? And he said, look at me, Father. I'm a freak. The best I can hope for is a freak show in the circus. I had dreams of being a movie star. And the priest said to him, if you promise to devote your life to Christ, I will get you the help you need. And it turns out that the priest's best friend was a top plastic surgeon. So they struck a deal. And the young man was <coughs> Mel Gibson. Okay? So here I was, not 24 hours later, sitting across from this guy who was asking me, how did a boy from Glasgow end up here? Mel Gibson. And before I could answer him, I had to ask him, how did you end up here? And so I shared that I had read this magazine article the day before. And I said, is that a true story? And he said, well, some of it is. Not all of it, but some of it is. He said, there was another incident where I was badly beaten. He said, I came in second best in a barroom brawl. I said, and my face was messed up, <laughs> smashed in like a pumpkin <laughs> at the end of Halloween. Um, and I said, and I required some stitches and things to make me look the way I do. He said, it's why I'm filmed in shadow or from the opposite side. And he showed me this zigzag scar on his cheek. Um, so how do we react when something stressful happens in our life? When life throws us a curveball, how do you react? Do you see it as an opportunity to be curious, to grow and evolve? Do you jump on the blame game? When I asked Mel about this, I said, how did you end up doing what you do? And he said, you know, I could allow my past to define me or I can transcend it. He said, but I've always had a, a spiritual practice and this just deepened it even more. And when I met him, he had just finished filming The Passion of the Christ. And he shared with me that he said, you know, this film was not about my faith or about me. He said, it was far bigger than that. He said, and all the while I was making the film, I really felt the Holy Ghost working through me. So where are those times in your life when you felt that presence working through you? When life throws you a curveball, do you tune into that presence? Life is full of ups and downs. Pain, pleasure, sorrow, joy, darkness and the light. Every single person you have a relationship with will be nice and mean, supportive and challenging, attractive and repulsive. Therefore, you're stabbing you in the back. You know. But with each relationship and each event, there is always an equal benefit and drawback. It's a universal law. And they're here to serve you and they're here to allow you to tap into the power within you to tap into that Holy Spirit operating through you. The other thing that Mel Gibson said, he said, it all starts with decision. I can decide to let my past define me or I can decide where I want to go. Now it's great that we want to make a decision, but what do you do with that next? Bob Proctor likes to talk a lot about frequencies, how we all operate on frequencies. 
everything is energy, including our thoughts. Now, if you're operating on a frequency down here, and this is where you want to go, it's operating at a higher frequency than where you're at. So if you want to get there, you've got to move yourself to that frequency. You've got to be there. Otherwise, it doesn't happen. See? The other thing is you've got to set the intention. Then you give it your attention. Then you put it out to the universe, to God, or as John D. Martini likes to refer to God as the grand organizing designer, <laughs> to handle the details. And then you must detach from the outcome. But you must have present moment awareness to recognize the gift, the opportunities when they show up. Without that, it could be sitting right in front of you or sitting right beside you on an airplane and you don't notice it because you're too busy living in the past or the future. Okay. So it all starts with decision and starting from where you are right now with what you've got right now. Too many people say, this is where I am, and that's where I want to get to, and when I get there, then I'll feel good. The reality is, you've got to feel good now. But be in the mindset, this is where I am. So how did a boy from Glasgow end up working in a private island in the Caribbean with all the A-list celebrities, world leaders, you name it, the movers and shakers of the world? <laughs> Years ago, I had studied with Deepak Chopra at the Chopra Center, uh, Ayurvedic Therapies. And when I came back to Canada, I needed this special piece of equipment. And I couldn't find any to buy. So along with a buddy, we created our own. And I ended up selling these to other spas and stuff uh, throughout North America. And one day I got a call from a company in Fairfield, Iowa, saying that one of their clients, a private island in the Caribbean, needed to buy some equipment. And they needed a trainer. And she said, are you a trainer in Ayurvedic therapy, Steve? I said, I am now. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Branson said, if a great opportunity presents itself and you don't know how to do it, say yes and then learn. Okay. So I said, I am now. <laughs> a week later, I got a call from another company. The company that actually designed the Chopra Center asking me the same question. We need a trainer. We need equipment. We hear your equipment's the best on the market. So I thought, great. Uh, where is this? He said, the Turks and Caicos Islands. I hadn't even heard of the Turks and Caicos Islands. So I was doing some research, Parrot Key. Never heard anything else for oh, a couple of months. And one day I was in Dalhousie Chapters bookstore. I don't know if it's still there. Um, and I'm looking at the magazine section. And there's a travel and leisure magazine. And on the front cover is the infinity pool at Parrot Key. As Deepak says, when something unusual happens, ask yourself, what's the karmic significance? So I bought the magazine. I went into the Starbucks, sat down, a coffee, and opened it up. And I found that the owner of the island's name was a lady by the name of Mrs. Ong from Singapore. Very wealthy person. And I also found the general manager's name. So I searched everywhere online and I found his contact details. And I wrote to him. And I said, you know, two people have asked me to come and train your staff, but I haven't heard anything else. And he said, the spa, I've got nothing to do with it. That's the owner's pet project. If she wants to be in touch with you, she'll find a way to be in touch with you. Now, most people would have let it go at that. Not me. <laughs> so I bought the magazine, as I said, and I brought it back to my office over in Kensington, and I had it in the reception area. And it must have lay there for a couple of months. And one of my clients came in, and she said, Steve, stop being so cheap, Scottish. 
buy some new magazines. <laughs> and I said, leave that. I'm going to go work there. And she said, in your dreams. <laughs> and I said, have a look around this room. Everything in this room started as a dream. Every morning I used to come into work, I'd sit down for five minutes and I'd look at that magazine cover and I'd visualize walking around the infinity pool at Parrot Key. And every night before I left, I spent five minutes visualizing walking around that pool. Remember, have the intention, give it your attention, take action. Put it out to the universe to handle the details and detach from the outcome, but have present moment awareness to recognize the gift when it shows up. One day my wife comes back from yoga class. She said, Steve, is it okay if we host Donna Farhi, who's world, one of the world's renowned yoga teachers? She's an American lady that lives in New Zealand. She said, the lady who normally hosts her is in the process of selling her home. And it's full of packing boxes. Would it be okay if we host her? I said, certainly. So Donna Afari was coming to, to town to teach this yoga retreat, and she ended up staying with us. So on a Saturday evening, we decided that we were going for dinner. And we're driving down 17th Avenue, and Donna Afari turns to me in the car, and she says, Steve, have you ever heard of Christina Ong? <laughs> and I said, yeah. She says, you have? And she said, it's the same Christina Ong that I know. I said, you know her? And she said, yes. She, she flies me from Singapore, uh, from New Zealand to Singapore to give her private lessons. She said, in fact, the last time I was there, she asked if her friend could join in. And I said, certainly. She said, in, in what? Barbara Streisand. I said, it sounds like it's the same person we're talking about here. The lady that I know of owns a private island in the Caribbean. She said, yes, Parrot Key. <laughs> so at the end of the yoga retreat here in Calgary, uh, my wife and I gifted Donna with an afternoon of Ayurvedic Panchakarma sessions. And after which she said, you know, that was the most profound experience I've ever had. I've had Ayurveda from all the gurus in India and all the top people around the globe. She said, no one does Panchakarma the way you and Pat do. I said, oh, thanks. So she was leaving to head to Kelowna next. And she said, I'm going to tell Christina Ong about you. The Thursday evening, I had a phone call from Christina Ong. She said, three people have told me about you. I'd be foolish not to pay attention to this. And the, last, the rest is history. So again, you must have the intention, give it, sorry, the intention, give it your attention, put it out to the universe to handle the details and detach from the outcome. But you must always have present moment awareness to recognize the gift when it shows up. And it can come in many forms, you see? So I'll just close with an old Celtic blessing which clearly shows the interconnectedness of the five great elements which according to Ayurveda are the building blocks for everything in creation. May the road rise up to meet you, earth. May the wind be always at your back, air. May the sun shine warm upon your face, fire, and the rains fall soft upon your fields, water. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand, space. Thank you. <laughs>